Welcome to our show, Empower Your Life. I'm your host, Cindy Marie. I'm super excited to introduce to you to our next, to our guest, our first guest for year 2022. She's a speaker, synergy coach, specializing in nutrition and health. She's also a yoga and autogenic training teacher. She started her coaching business back in 2018. And since then, she has uh, given conferences to a large audience about nutrition to talk about uh, how it impacts your health and well being, which we will cover on this episode today. She's also awarded as the Nutritional Coach of the Year in Belgium, also, most inspirational healthy living. So I'm super grateful and uh, honored to introduce to you our next guest. Here is Miss Catherine Pollitt. Hi, Catherine. Cindy, how are you? I'm Very happy to be good. there. Thank you. Thank you once again for, for, for taking this time. And I know how much busy you are. I really, really appreciate it. So it's okay. how are you? I'm fine. I'm fine. <laughs> Share with us, with our viewers, uh, with all the people that not having got to know you, who is Catherine Pollitt, how's your, your coaching business started and how long have you been doing this? You, you men uh, I mentioned like it's 2018. So just elaborate a little bit how everything started. I started first off as a yoga teacher. Uh, of, I don't even remember how many years ago. <laughs> uh, my mom was a yoga teacher. So I, I started with yoga uh, when I was a, a child, basically. Mm -hmm. And uh, she was always into this uh, healthy living. Uh, so I imagine that uh, unconsciously I, I really took everything in, or almost everything, mm -hmm. um, which doesn't mean that you can't indulge from time to time in things you, you like eating or drinking or whatever. Uh, but the, the, the basic line is still uh, living uh, healthy. So, um, a lot of people came, even when I was already a yoga teacher, came to me to for advice uh, and with a lot of questions. And even later on, this was always something which uh, was present in my life. And at one point I said, OK, uh, I want to do this. I want to dig deeper into this. I got certified uh, from the Institute of Integrative Nutrition uh, from New York as a nutrition health coach. And this is when I started my uh, coaching uh, practice back in 2018. And uh, how, how did the transformation from the yoga into, into coaching? Is there any, any reason or, or sort of like a calling or situation whereby okay, I'm going to take this uh, coaching now because of a lot of people asking you for advices anyway. Is there any sort of situation whereby... I, I would say it's also the fact that uh, nutrition uh, was always something of interest uh, to me. Mm -hmm. So I was really interested uh, in the subject and I wanted to learn more. And uh, at one point I decided when my, my daughters went uh, finished school, the, the youngest one, to say, okay, now... Uh, I have more time, not that mm -hmm. I will fill my time uh, necessarily, but it's really, it gave me the opportunity to really uh, learn more and uh, go more in depth. Uh, and So there are a lot of people out there that are starting to sort of having the stages. For me, it's because of my environment. Uh, I always have this sort of feeling that we have to shift our mindset and strengthen our emotion to because of a lot of things that happening in our lives that it's really difficult to control mm -hmm. but if we are going to sort of uh, build that uh, strong mindset and emotion therefore we will be able to control our lives in in a very fast pace so this is why I kind of ask you how did you sort of enroll yourself into a coaching uh, journey so so I, I mean uh, I explained a bit uh, about the nutrition side uh, the coaching side it's uh, I'm naturally uh, I love listening to people uh, and I think that you learn much more when you listen than when you talk mm -hmm. and uh, I'm also always uh, ready to to help if someone needs help and so everything in some way came together and this was really uh which made me uh choose to be a nutrition health coach 
Yes, interesting. I think uh, really the bottom line is that for those people who who took the journey or who are in the journey of of coaching is really like we we love to help people. Yes. We we want to transform lives. So my next question is that what are the common reasons you think why people fail to lose weight or living a healthier lifestyle? Is it like only the eating habits to work on or is there something else that most people need to consider or understand? I think there are a lot of factors uh, on one side and on the other side, which I will talk uh, after that is uh, how you can go back to the what I call back to basics. So we, we live in a world where uh, compared to 50 years ago, everything is fast. Everything is quick, a lot of work. Now, uh, nowadays, mothers uh, almost all work, which was not necessarily the case 50 years ago. Yeah. So uh, for the children, it has uh, not only for the parents, but also for the children, it has already an, uh, a first impact because uh, it's not necessarily homemade food, homemade meals, uh, the mother prepared because she, she had the time to, to, to do this. Now it's really the quick solution. So uh, we put something together quick. Uh, if it's already made and uh, or a takeaway, it's even better. Okay. And so I think this is one of the factors uh, where uh, there is a problem at the nutrition level, which also impacts obviously the health. And yeah. um, so this is one of the main things. Then you have also so much media uh, nowadays. I mean, we had already the advertisement and so on 50 years ago, but not uh, to the same amount we have it now. Yes. So we really are uh, seeing everywhere food, uh, yeah. which is not necessarily the good uh, nutritious yeah. one. And so people go for the easy, easy fix to say it yeah. in a way. So yes. what can make my life easier? I just uh, grab my phone and, and order something uh, to, to as a takeaway or that they bring it to me uh, even home. So I have to, do, to move less. Mm -hmm. uh, I get it ready and it's fine from time to time uh, or going to the restaurant. But if you do this day in, day out, I mean, uh, at one point you're, it's not working. Yeah, so <laughs> we're going to cover to that next question is the quick fix diets, like the, the fast one, the fast, fast takeaway food. What can you say about that? Like, um, I've known a lot of people uh, that are taking a lot of uh, quick fix uh, supplements or quick fits, uh, fit fix uh, diet pills or quick fix uh healthy juices mm -hmm. uh, what can you say about that that's that really sustainable to have or does that really gonna help the the, the well-being and the, the physical of the person or is there something else that uh, as human being I mean for example I'm your I'm your client and I have this challenge what can you what can you tell me and understand the quick fix diets and what we should understand that there's more beyond quick fix diets. Yes. So, I mean, obviously it's a subject we could talk uh, hours about it, but I would first say I'm, uh, I'm against all diets. So when I think about diet, uh, it's more like a sustainable way of living mm -hmm. uh, and lifestyle rather than what you eat. Mm -hmm. Obviously, what you eat is also considered a diet, but the quick fix diets to lose weight, for example, even if you follow it through uh, as indicated, you probably will lose weight, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. it's restrictive. So the problem is you, you don't give your body what it needs. And once you mm -hmm. stop, first of all, if it's restricted, you say, oh, now I can eat again. So you probably yes. eat even more or worse mm -hmm. than before because you you mm -hmm. have these cravings and mm -hmm. uh, so th that's one of the problems and you gain your weight back and so oftentimes even more because if you are on a very restrictive diet your metabolism slows down mm -hmm. and puts himself uh, into uh i would say like uh, restriction mode mm -hmm. and so this tiniest thing you eat 
your body will keep it uh, in reserve. And so once you eat again normally or even a little bit more than before, your meta metabolism won't go up again where it was before. This is the yeah. first thing. And he will still be in this reserve mode. Everything I get because I don't have enough, I have to keep it. Mm -hmm. So this is already why I think uh, diets don't work uh, and also not good for the health. Mm -hmm. So uh, you can uh, have supplements or juices or whatever you want. It's a quick fix, but think about quick fix uh, in the time span, it won't last. Mm -hmm. So actually, why, why put yourself through a period of time, be it three days, one week, one month or whatever, and not feeling well, okay, you will probably lose some weight, but mm -hmm. after that, you will gain it back again. Mm, so, yes. And oftentimes people are due to the restriction uh, are having like mood swings they can't eat anything it's yes. like uh, if i tell you now uh, don't think of the chocolate you can't eat obviously the first thing you think i will chocolate. find chocolate yes so, <laughs> and uh, i i think that it, it it doesn't make sense when i said before going back to basics you have to think about your body like a, a factory it's a chemical mm -hmm. factory which needs ingredients which are the nutrients to function well mm -hmm. it's like uh, for men will uh, probably will understand it uh, even better if you have a car you have to put not only uh, gas oil in but you have to put also oil and you have to check the water pressure the the air pressure and 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 so your car needs all the ingredients to so that you can use it without yes. problem and your body it's the same so if you don't give your body the nutrients it needs uh, it will crave these nutrients and then the problem is if you don't have the vitamins minerals and so on you can feed yourself with uh, 2000 calories of uh, cookies for example and you will still be hungry yes because you don't give your body the nutrients and your body is really uh, craving the nutrients to function well and it will tell you give me something to eat but what he wants to tell you is give me the nutrients i need to function so back to basic, it's really giving your body what it needs. And if you have a, a healthy diet, which is uh, also one of the things oftentimes people forget, it's mainly based on fruits and vegetables, yes. so produce. So if you take one plate and half of your plate is made up of uh, veggies, and then mm. you have 25% carbs and 25% protein, which doesn't have to be animal protein. It can yes. also be plant-based protein. Yes. Uh, you give your body what it needs. Mm -hmm. so keeping in mind just these uh, proportions, it's already the, already the first step. And uh, if you think you go to a restaurant and you order something, the main ingredient on your plate is protein. Mm -hmm. Then next to it, some carbs. And depending on where you go, uh, to which restaurant you go, you have some veggies. Yes. And sometimes it's just like uh, to look good on your plate. <laughs> but <True. laughs> it's not enough. It's not enough. So how do you want to your body? I mean, from time to time, it's fine. Yes. But day in, day out, your, your body won't, won't stand with, uh, with that. Uh, just uh, sticking on this question on the quick fix diets, because we can see this products everywhere and uh, a lot of people actually becoming so eager to purchase this i'm not sure whether you have encountered like client of yours whereby they used to take a quick fix diet and how do you i mean i'm sure that that person if you have encountered that client she's already or he's already committed to make changes because she doesn't she or he doesn't didn't see the the, the big changes that he wants or she wants in a more sustainable uh, lifestyle so how did you transition that belief and also taking to to the action that quick fix is not going to help you but because a lot of people will say, oh, you're living a healthier lifestyle and you're living like a boring food, you know? <laughs> so <laughs> this, is, this is also, you know, people think like uh, eating healthy, it's like uh, just eating salad. No, no, absolutely not. And uh, there, there are so many different uh, veggies and fruits and uh, all foods actually 
that you can can do delicious dishes with yes and agree. it's also and even in 15 minutes 15 or 20 minutes so it's not actually not quicker uh, not, not slower it doesn't take necessarily more time to prepare a healthy meal than to go for to put a pizza in the oven for example or some something already made uh, in the microwave mm-hmm. Okay, maybe you gain five minutes, but mm-hmm. does it really taste as well? I'm I'm pretty sure it doesn't. So um, yeah, I had I had the, this already with some clients, and the thing is, it's first of all, they need to understand why it doesn't function. So uh, explaining mm-hmm. exactly what their body needs, this is the first step. The second step is I'm not uh, I'm not giving diets like or a meal plan you have to follow by by the letter and say okay today you can eat this tomorrow that and then the next day. Interesting. Because it that and I, I will tell you why I I'm always talking about bio individuality, mm-hmm. so everyone is different and unique, which is really awesome. So what fits and what functions for one person won't necessarily function for another one. Agree, agree. So maybe my way of eating won't be perfect for you or the other way yes. around. Yes. Another uh, another thing I always say, for example, don't ask an Italian to stop eating pizza or pasta yeah. or oh stop drinking God. coffee. Or And we have all of these regional cultural meals we eat. Don't ask a person to just don't eat it anymore. Because then you come again into this restrictive mode and okay, they may be do it they may be able to do it one week or a certain certain time, but at one time they will say, I'm I'm fed up with what I'm eating. I want to eat my pasta or I want to eat whatever they used to eat. So uh, it's rather uh, again switching the proportions on your plate. And uh, as I always say, the, for me, there is a, what I call the 90-10 rule. Uh, if 90% of the time you eat healthy, 10% of the time you can indulge. And yes. it can also be 80-20. It depends, again, we are all unique. So what works for you? And uh, when you indulge and eat something you love, you necessarily have to really uh, indulge in it and not feel guilty. Because if you feel guilty, unconsciously, you will have your stress hormones going up. So oh, yeah. <laughs> this doesn't help neither because then your metabolism will work in, in a different way, you know. So it's really enjoying. And I think that most people don't enjoy. It's also, uh, again, back to the time we are in now, everything has to go quick. Uh, people don't take even the time to sit at a table and eat and have a nice conversation with family yes. or friends. But yes, yes, yes. So they un- actually eat, uh, oftentimes uh, they eat at, uh, at lunchtime in front of their computer while they are working. So they don't allow the, the, their subconscious and, and their brain to realize that they're actually eating. And so yeah. they just eat like this unconsciously and don't even realize that maybe they ate too much. Mm-hmm. That's another point. Ah, oh, interesting. So, can you can you elaborate that further in a sense that because I think there are a lot of people nowadays that will, especially working from home, right? Uh, this that they just put their food in front of their PC while working, and then yes. as when you mentioned, you never notice that you're actually eating so much. Does that also uh, influence or affecting our our body and our our health? Yes. Yes, of course. And I mean, now working from home, people move less than before. Mm -hmm. Uh, So uh, because even if it's just uh, when we are in an office, you go from one office to another office, you go out at lunchtime, you move around much more to see the colleagues. At home, you sit down in the morning in front of your PC and most people, they just sit there all day, Mm -hmm. just uh, getting up to have something to eat. And then again, eating in front of the PC and... uh, so you move less, you're not di- disconnecting. And another thing is uh, you don't make a, a transition between I'm working, mm. I'm eating. Yes, yes, yes. So one of the things I always say before each meal, 
you just sit down and breathe deeply, be it one time, two times, three times, 10 times, whatever feels right for you. Again, one person is not another one. Maybe you you breathe deeply two times and you have enough, another okay. one will do it yeah. 10 times. But this allows to, to disconnect from what you were working before. I agree. Uh, your stress hormones go down because this is really something, it's like a on-off button of your stress mm -hmm. hormones, mm -hmm. just breathing deeply. And then you eat and your digestion will be much better as well. So I would suggest, even if you don't have much time, you need to take make a pause. So make the pause and go sit at a dining table, a kitchen table, wherever, and eat there. Listen to some nice music in the meantime, if you're alone uh, or have your meal with your family, or if you have friends living nearby, get together at lunchtime to eat. Mm -hmm. so this is always possible yes yes agree actually uh you know um my husband is actually of course working from home but we have this uh routine that when i prepared and uh ready the the, the lunch we always go to the dining room and so he would yes. have a pause for his work the same as for for myself but i do i do understand and what you're saying that you know sometimes back then when i was working in the office in a corporate job i know that i i feel guilty on that but uh, now i really like uh, mindful and really giving myself a pause and uh, it does really help and it also um, give your your mood transition yes like when you get out of that office or on that office mood and then you went to the dining room and then you will have a conversation with your wife or with your kids quickly then your your attention will be a little bit different awesome so i think that's a great great uh, information for a lot of viewers right now that it's really important that uh, we spend our time for meal outside our our working working hour and we we have to like ideally to get out of our working area yes. <laughs> so we don't feel like okay i have to eat fast awesome thank you then the next question so before, that, before you you go further i would also ask add that you know the fact that you get up move from one space uh -huh. to another and make a pause for for eating or for having a coffee or tea or whatever most people think I can't stop because I lose time and I have so much to do. But actually, okay. when you make a pause mm -hmm. and you go back to what you were doing before, you are recharged, you have a clearer mind and you actually work quicker than before. Mm -hmm. So so you're back into this much quicker than before with much more energy. And this really allows you to, to do your work much better than before. Then instead of uh, having your lunch in front of your PC. Yeah, totally. I... I think I always say this to my family that, you know, health is your wealth. Yes. Uh, and I, I, I 100% or more than that, I agree on that. And this is why I put my health as a priority and I make sure that um, I still indulge, of course. Uh, but one thing that I can share with you back then, I love to, to eat fried chicken. Mm hmm so, you know, when your moment is coming, that period of the month is coming. Yes. So you have all of these cravings. Yes. And I was craving for this fried chicken. It has been a long time. And then we went to this, uh, I could consider fast food, Popeyes. When I order that and when I have the first three, four bites, you know, one interesting happened is that I don't feel the same way. Like... It doesn't taste good anymore. It's because I, I've been very uh, living in a more healthier lifestyle for more yes. than two, three years now. And I I appreciate more the whole food, you know, even though that's, that's meat, but then it's not properly prepared good for your body. Mm -hmm. And then I told myself like, oh, that's interesting. Like your body will tell you as well that when you have started to build that uh, more healthier lifestyle, yes, everything that you used to have will start to change as well. Because now my snacks, like compared to before, would be more chips, but now it's like nuts. 
<laughs> but you know, uh, your taste buds will change over time. The more healthy you eat, the more healthy food you will crave. Uh, that's for sure. And I, I, it's also when you eat crap, let's say crap junk food or, or food which doesn't really have nutrients, uh, fast food and so on. Uh, you don't realize how bad it tastes and until you eat really good food. And what I always say is use ingredients with, which doesn't come with a code bar. So fruits, veggies, the, the really the basic food. food. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And not processed food. And uh, when people say, yeah, but it doesn't taste, of course it tastes because you can use all the spices. I mean, uh, uh, oh my God, Speaking this is of that, people forget uh, always. Yeah, I, 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 um, I mean, I, I mean, in, in all my honesty, when, uh, when I was younger, I used to put this uh, seasonings, you know, the instant seasoning with a lot of <laughs> MSG. But then when I started to become more conscious, then I, I try to, to encourage my family. But of course, again, it goes back to the, the culture. Yes, um, since you mentioned that, what is your kind of uh, advice for, for people that having this limiting thoughts or belief that there's no way that we can have tasty food without instant seasonings or just salt and pepper? I would say, I would say be creative. Mm -hmm. make a, a, a recipe and uh, don't use the, your normal seasoning like MSG and so on mm -hmm. and really uh, try things out let's put all the seasonings uh, that you want or follow a recipes to, to know which, which ingredients uh, work best together and taste mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and do it more than once Yeah, because oftentimes people say yeah but uh, I'm not used to it so make it from time to time and at one point, you will you you will really uh, realize that actually it tastes really great. I agree. I agree with you. It's just that a lot of people, I guess, nowadays having a difficult time to make an effort. But you know, there is also another factor. And when you think of processed food, uh, ready-made food, oftentimes you have a lot of salt. Yes. Uh, and maybe some other seasoning, ready, ready seasoning. Why? Because they need to give some sort of flavor. Because mm -hmm. if you take all the seasoning off, actually, it's maybe even disgusting. But at least it doesn't taste well. And when you take really raw ingredients, yes, you don't need to cover them by by something so that you don't that you don't taste it. You know. And another yeah. another thing is just if you can use fresh herbs. That's even even better because then you have really all the flavor. I mean, it's uh, you can't compare it. Yes. And the other thing is also we all we are we're used to see all these nice food uh, photographies on social media in the advertisement. Yeah. But actually, uh, when you cook home, obviously the red is maybe not so red, the green is not so green, <laughs> depending on 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 what you prepare. But. Uh, there is a difference between the visual, which may look very good, but not necessarily taste good if it's like fast food and so on. And what you prepare on your own, which really tastes great, even if you don't have uh, these visuals you can see everywhere. Yeah. What can you say about those people that will tell you that, but I don't know how to cook. I don't even have the passion to cook. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> you know, you have nowadays you can find cookbooks where you just see the a picture of each ingredient, like five ingredients, and then it's really three lines. So giving you now first you do this, then you do that, and then you do that. And I'm pretty sure everyone who can use uh, a, a TV, the, the the remote control, the remote control can also follow a recipe. So. It's not complicated. Cooking actually is not difficult. Mm -hmm. I mean, obviously, you have recipes which are easier to do than, than, than others. Yes, yes, yes. But the basics uh, recipes are really easy to do. You just have to follow what is written step by step. Mm -hmm. So uh, find one, one of these books where you see uh, pictures of the ingredients, I think mm -hmm. like uh, cooking for dummies or I don't know. There are a lot of depending on the country and the, lang and, and yes. the language it is. And it's really, e really easy to, to, you open the book and you see already, okay, I need this, three lines, and my, my dinner or my lunch is ready. And 
in the easy recipes, it's really like 10, 15, 20 minutes max. Maybe you can add, depending on what you're preparing, uh, 10, 15 minutes additionally, but this is when it's cooking. So you don't have to, to be next to it and wait, like I'm losing time. You can do something else in between. You can prepare, uh, dress the, a nice table, whatever. There you go. So anyone who are giving the, 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 the reason of not preparing food at home or just even cooking, so we can. And I, I is truly agreeing on that because even 15 minutes of a meal, you can prepare at home. It will be yes. tasty and also will be filling to your body. So yeah. awesome. Would, I have even a, a tip for the, the lazy ones. So uh, a lot of <laughs> veggies, obviously, one of, one of the things uh, cooking implies it's preparing, you know, cutting and so mm. on. And if you don't like this, you can find uh, frozen veggies already cut and you just, so you don't have anything to do. And uh, even if they don't seem like being fresh because they're frozen, oftentimes they're even fresher than the produce you find in the supermarket because when when they they pick it from from the trees or from the ground when they harvest it it's frozen directly so it's prepared directly frozen directly so really fresh and this is also a good way to still always have something at home so you don't have the excuse i have nothing to to cook interesting there you go additional tip for people out there that are giving excuse of not able to to cook <laughs> <laughs> awesome so My, my next question to you, as for everyone else to understand, like you mentioned earlier, that you don't normally provide uh, meals or diets to your clients. So we want to get to know more of your daily, three daily health and wellness habits that maybe some of us will, will try it at home and then will really help us to improve our, our wellness and, and, and health. Okay, so I would say that the day starts the night before. And by that, I mean uh, your sleep. Mm -hmm. It's really important to sleep enough, uh, which compared to 50 years or 100 years ago is really a huge problem nowadays. Mm -hmm. People don't sleep enough. They sleep six hours at mm -hmm. best, sometimes even less. Mm -hmm. And uh, it has a direct impact not only on your health, but also on your cravings the next day. Yes. So uh, when you hear uh, the ideal would be to sleep between seven and eight hours, mm -hmm. actually it's based on the fact that one sleep cycle uh, lasts uh, 90 minutes, so one and a half hours. Mm -hmm. It can be one hour, 20 minutes, one hour, 40 minutes, depending on the person. Again, everyone is unique, but seven and a half, it's five cycles. So this is actually why everywhere you can read uh, or hear that the ideal time to sleep is between seven and eight hours. So that's the first thing. If you know that you have to get up at six o'clock mm -hmm. and if you go to bed at midnight, obviously you, won't, you, you will miss one cycle. Yes. And a lot of people think, okay, but that's not a problem. Over the weekend, I can sleep uh, over, I can sleep longer, and then I, I gain back what I missed before. Well, actually not. One mm -hmm. night where, 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 you had, where you missed whatever amount of time of sleep is missed. Mm -hmm. It's not like you can't fill it back by sleeping longer over the weekend. Yeah. This doesn't yeah. work. So this is the first thing. And for me, uh, which working from home obviously made it uh, much easier. And I think that those still working from home should really think about this. Um, go to bed knowing, for example, if you have to get up at, uh, at six, mm -hmm. or let's say you have to get up at seven, try going to bed at 10 or 11 at the latest. Mm -hmm. And don't put your alarm or put your alarm at the latest when it's really the latest time you have to be up. And you will see that maybe not the first night, but uh, after a couple of nights, you will wake up before your alarm. Mm -hmm. and it's actually the best time to get up directly because oftentimes when you are sleep deprived, the, the next thing is to snooze in the morning, like nine minutes more, nine minutes more, nine <laughs> minutes more. And actually when you really need to get up, you feel tired, more tired than if you would have uh, 
if you would have uh, respected your cycle. So when I go to bed, I always have my alarm. You never know, just uh, in case of. But I always uh, get up earlier because I really respect my sleep cycle. So I sleep around seven and a half hours. Mm -hmm. When I'm awake, I get up directly. Yes. So you have much more energy. You feel really the boost in the morning, the energy in the morning, uh, compared to when you snooze your alarm clock. I don't know how many times. So this would be really the first thing. The second thing is breathing. So mm. people think like, and I had this feedback from a lot of clients. Like I, I found this strange at the beginning when you told me this, but actually, really, this made a huge difference. And we don't think about it because we are doing this unconsciously. But mm -hmm. uh, oftentimes when we are stressed, when you, we are really busy, we don't deep uh, breathe deeply. Mm -hmm. So one of the things I said already before, breathing before each meal. Uh, but I like to start my day breathing deeply, first thing, then before each meal. And then each time you have a moment during the day, maybe a little bit stressed, or maybe too much work, just take it you can even do it when you're in a meeting it's just breathing deeply one two three ten times whatever fe whatever fit feels well to you so this would be the second one and then the third one you need to drink enough mm -hmm. so this is also oftentimes we eat because we think we are hungry but actually we crave water wow interesting yes and if you don't drink enough, uh, even if you are just two to three percent dehydrated, uh, your energy levels go down. And when your energy levels go down, the same way if you don't sleep enough, uh, the next day, what your your body reacts to this like, I need quick energy mm -hmm. because I need a boost. I need a boost. Mm -hmm. I need quick energy. And this is why oftentimes, most of the time, people go for sugary, sweet mm -hmm. because it's it's a an energy kick an energy boost right. but it's like your blood sugar levels go like up like this and then crash which means that half an hour or one hour depending on what you eat later you're craving again and it's not necessarily because you're hungry it's or you because you're tired or because you didn't drink enough and so most people should really uh, have a look at how many uh, glasses of water or herbal tea they drink during the day and uh, not included are coffee and alcohol because this is dehydrating so normally if you drink one cup of coffee don't count this as a one cup of water no drink one cup of water next to it and and this goes hand in hand if you eat a lot of processed food the the water the ingredients of your meals won't have so much water Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. If you cook healthy meals with a lot of fruits and veggies, uh, there's already much more water in it. So actually you won't need to, to drink so much water. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Obviously it depends on your energy. If you go for a run for one hour, you will need uh, to restore your, your water levels of the body. Yeah. But uh, if, you if you have a soup, if you drink a juice, uh, obviously this is liquid. Yeah, yeah, well, I think it just takes time if, 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 uh, because I believe that they said it will take 66 days to, to build a good habit. Do you believe it depends, on that? It depends on a lot of factors, you know. It went from three weeks or 21 days to 66 days. Uh, it depends on what, what type of habit. It depends on do you change a bad habit with a good one or do you just add a good one? Uh, do you link it to something you're already doing? For example, if you link to a, a, a new habit to an existing one, it's much quicker. Mm -hmm. And then there is also the motivation behind why are you doing this or why do you want to change this? Yes. Just because you have to or because you really want to do it? So this is, these are also questions to ask yourself. Correct, correct. It, it, it has something within yourself. It's actually my mantra every day. Like, why do you wake up every morning? Why do you want to get up, get up? And and that really helps me. So, uh, yeah, I think it's all about uh, experimenting, <laughs> working things out, what works for individual, because it's always different. 
as a general way of speaking, I mean, everyone has to ask uh, the question, why, why do I want to do this? Why do I want to change this? And how can I do it the easy way? Because it's not a question of willpower and it doesn't have to be hard, really. But knowing why you want to do something already gives you the first uh, hint. Yeah, well, there you go. There are three powerful health habits and wellness habits from Catherine. I'm sure for a lot of people, it may take a little bit effort, but I'm sure that it will give a lot of um, a good, uh, good feeling inside, outside. And uh, everyone should, should try that uh, three habits that uh, Catherine just mentioned. So my favorite question and every, every guest that I have interviewed, I always ask this because it always fascinates me, you know, what makes people feeling positive. Mm -hmm. So I want to, to know, how do you keep yourself optimistic? I think, first of all, I'm an optimistic person, maybe <laughs> much more <laughs> than, than other people. And obviously, it doesn't mean that uh, my life is day in, day out, 100% uh, positive. Sometimes you have things popping up, life happens. Yes. And uh, whenever there is a problem or something which could be seen as a problem, my first thought is, in the worst case, what could happen? Then really think about it clearly into the details. In the worst case, how is the picture? And then next step, if this is the worst case, what would be the solution? And so if you know what to do if the worst case happens, then you, you're fine. You have the solution. So if, it, if this happens, you know already how to act or react or, or, or what you need to do. And then push this aside, throw it away. Mm -hmm. Don't think about it anymore. And just focus on, in the best case scenario, what, what's happening. So I have a question, a uh, follow-up question on that. Um, I don't know if you would agree, but we have a lot of people right now having uh, on the depression, and yes. anxiety situation. And, you know, talking to friends for a couple of hours will help. Then after you you have off that conversation, you have this limiting beliefs or negative talk to yourself again. And all of those optimistic feelings suddenly disappeared. Do you have that kind of like advice on, on how these people, because obviously this uh, we cannot really depend on to person, right? For, for yes. 24 hours. But how can this kind of type of person in this situation can really work on themselves to have that optimistic or uh, optimism feeling so they can move forward every day? So I would say one of the things we have to be clear on uh, our environment, which means uh, when I talk about people like family, friends, colleagues, uh, Think about who boosts you, who brings you energy. You have people in your life who are always uplifting you mm -hmm. and you have people who are more negative and draining your own energy. So if you don't feel really well, go rather to those people who are able to uplift you and uplift your mood and, and give you a boost of energy rather than people who are always complaining, who even if there is nothing to complain, because this is already something which have a, has a direct impact, not only in the moment, but also afterwards. Yes. Uh, think about what you're watching. So you're, you're, you're feeding your, your mind. What do you watch? What do you read? What do you listen to? And even if we don't think about this, it has a big impact. So if you're stressed with the current situation and you watch uh, only news 24 seven, obviously this won't bring your energy and, and mood levels up rather down. So uh, watch rather a, a comedy on TV or, or at the cinema, well, cinema, depending where, where <laughs> you are. Yes. So we, we talk about TV, no, but watch a comedy, listen to a, a fun podcast, or even look, look to uh, cute cats uh, videos on YouTube or whatever, whatever brings you joy. So think about what is bringing me joy. And then it, it's really about focusing on the positive things, because obviously there are always things which happen 
and and there are two sides so there is some positive and maybe there is too much more negative yes well try to try to be a detective in this situation isn't there at least one positive thing yes. i can find and then be grateful be grateful about what you have in your life what is going well today uh, about the people you have in your life all the things you can be grateful for if you do this exercise every day which will automatically boost your mood and then the, and the last thing is also what you eat because oh, there yes. Really, yes there are really there is really food which boosts your mood so food also can have a direct impact on how you feel awesome that's a very very uh insightful and also very helpful uh, not tips but really like to to trend, uh, shift our mood into a more optimistic side because i believe that we have so many people out there that really suffering on this position and um, even you know even like providing what you are grateful for somehow yes. it's becoming a difficult for most of the people and uh, yeah so everyone you know grateful about things remind yourself <laughs> that you know every time that we wake up and we are breathing we have life to live on this day <laughs> that's already something that we we are grateful for and interesting you, know, you 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 can also just be grateful because uh, someone smiled at you a smile we can be grateful for a nice flower which is uh, coming out you can be grateful for that uh, the sunshine today uh, yeah, compared your to your plant is alive <laughs> it's it's this it doesn't have to be something huge it can be like tiny little yes. things you know yes. I think there are a lot of people now that really small things they sort of ignore it. So I hope that everyone listening right now and watching right now that if you're in a position that really you think that there's nothing good things, you know, to be grateful or to be thankful for, there are so many things that we can write down even the smallest things. And we will find that slowly that, oh yeah, <laughs> right. There's so many things to be grateful for. Yes. And I mean, it, it's, you know, you, you don't, if, if you have difficulties starting with this exercise, uh, don't think about today, think about your life, think about a period in your life where everything was fine. Mm -hmm. And even if you just can find one thing, you don't need necessarily to have three things or whatever number of things just start i mean be open be open minded and just start writing uh what if you write it will have more effect than if you think it only and write down every day what you're grateful for yes. and over time and studies have shown that over time it has a huge impact on how you feel i agree uh i actually all i mean i'm doing journaling so that's another part that I believe that it keeps me always optimistic despite the challenging uh, situation that we're facing every day. Uh, but again, I've heard this with my friends and families that some of these things are really not working for them and it's, and it's totally fine, right? Because that's why, like what you said, just be open, you know, take yes. that first step and just experiment because every one of us really different and maybe different thing maybe drawing or maybe painting will be make more um, feeling great and uh, would will take away that depression or anxiety yes. yeah agree so I think you know within with this uh, conversation we covered a lot of very profound very valuable information for all the people out there that not believing or maybe having that hesitation that mm -hmm. actually <laughs> food is part of how we create our mood as well overall. Yes. So, Absolutely. yes. So I, I believe that everyone learns so many things about understanding the mood, the health, the wellness by having this, uh, listening to our episode. So for all those people, not only in Belgium, 
but also across the world that would like to get to know you, perhaps um, would like to have this kind of session. Uh, you have like, I don't know, it's an open question. Like, do you have free session for everyone that would like to, to understand? I have on my website, I have a let's talk uh, 20 minutes free chat. Uh, so you, you can uh, book on, on my website, uh, you can send me an email and uh, because obviously everyone is different. Yes. So maybe uh, what one person is searching, it's maybe totally different from what I'm doing. So it's not a fit for that. Uh, maybe there is another reason where I think that maybe I can't help for whatever reason. They can, uh, whenever they want, just go on my website and uh, get an appointment. So it's a uh, www.catherinepaulet.com. Is that right? Dot coach. Oh, that coach. And yes. what about your social media for Instagram, maybe? So Instagram, I have. I'm not very busy for the moment because I'm I, I'm uh, getting up a new project which I can talk about uh, just after if you want. So uh, it's catherinepaulet.coach on Instagram. Mm -hmm. Uh, if you search me, you find me also on Twitter, where I'm not so often depending. Uh, yeah, Facebook as well. Just search <laughs> Catherine Poly yeah. Coach. Uh, but you have also all the links uh, on my website. Anyway, uh, this is one thing. Uh, the other thing I'm, I'm right now, uh, since last year, uh, in collaboration with a friend of mine who is a sustainability expert, yeah. we launched uh, Healthy You, Healthy Planet. Yeah. which is uh, how you eat has not only a direct impact on your health, but also on the health of uh, the planet. Mm -hmm. And um, there it's healthy you, healthy planet dot earth. Okay. And uh, if you want, I can give you all the, all the links so that people can uh, follow through if they're interested in. Yes, uh, I'm going to cover that on the blog side. Yes. And also everyone, if you do enjoy, I'm sure you do enjoy and have this valuable information on this video, make sure you follow uh, Catherine on her Instagram, also the Health You, Healthy Planet, uh, Healthy Earth. Is that right? Yes, you. No, healthy you, healthy planet. Ah, healthy you, el el healthy planet. So yes. make sure to follow that one because uh, I'm also an advocate for uh, sustainability. So, I mean, that's why we also connect. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so there you go. Everyone uh, follow follow Catherine uh, on her Instagram. And also if you want to, if you feel like it resonates you for something that you're looking for, don't hesitate to connect with, with Catherine on her website because you can tell from her that she, she, she will definitely try to support or help you or serve you in whatever position she can. And uh, because, you know, and uh, yeah. So is there anything that you would like to share uh, before we cut this conversation or? Maybe one question everyone can ask uh, when you're doing something, when you're not feeling right or whatever may happen in your life. Sometimes it's just good to pause and be aware, being aware of how your body feels, being aware of how you feel uh, regarding a certain situation uh, and just listening to what's happening around and to yourself and to your thoughts. Uh, oftentimes this brings us much farther and uh, also a second thing not only listening uh, to your body but also listen to how you speak to yourself this is something I we always have to remind so if I can just say this instead of telling yourself every now and then or more often than, than, than it should be I have to do this I should do that uh, I need to just switch this and start with what if, what if I did this, what if I did that? And this only little change brings your energy on a totally different level. Because when you say I have to, I need to, I must do, I should do, it's heavy and it really drains your energy. But if you start with what if, what if I did this, what if I did that? It's so much lighter. And this is already the, already the first step to do whatever you want. 
Awesome. Very powerful. I love it. Thank you. Thank you so much for sharing that. I think, you know, that last message, a lot of people will, 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 will resonate with it. And, and we discussed it earlier with optimistic situation. So thank you. Thank you so much, Catherine. And uh, for everyone out there, if you're listening, once again, don't forget to follow her on her Instagram and also check on her website and the other Instagram that she had, the Healthy You, Healthy Planet for sustainability that we all want to make an impact and make a difference and to to contribute in a smaller way we can. So check it out. And also don't forget to stay on your track, stay on your game. If there's anything that we always come up together is here, I'm bringing you, uh, you know, inspiring stories from wonderful people with expertise, just like Catherine to transform lives. So thank you. Thank you so much, everyone. And uh, don't forget to share this video so our website will grow organically and uh, see you next time. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you for having me. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoy that interview and I hope you find it inspiring and motivating. Remember, stay optimistic and keep taking action slowly but surely for your big dreams. Thank you once again and I'll see you on the next episode here at Empower Your Life. Thank you.